chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, as we continue on with this great and wonderful truth concerning the spiritual needs of the church, and we're in that section relative to the wonderful walk of the believer in light of the church. We have <coughs> dealt first of all with the believer in light of the family of God, the wonderful walk, being imitators of God, walking in love as Christ also loved us. Then we started with verse 22 down through verse 23, where you have the wonderful walk of the believer in the church in relationship to husbands and wives. And then in the sixth chapter, in verses 1 through 4, the wonderful walk in light of the families. And then in verses 5 through 9, that wonderful walk as far as the workplace is concerned. So he takes the full ramification of the walk of the believers. First of all, you'll notice the priority the walk in relationship to God. And secondly, the walk in relationship to husbands and wives. And then thirdly, the walk in relationship to the family, the fathers and the children specifically mentioned. And then thirdly, that wonderful walk as we walk in the workplace in life. And we have just looked at the first few verses here, verses 22, 23, and 24, in light of instruction relative to the wives. And that emphasis that we believe is proper, that he singles out the wives first, not because of need necessarily. But I believe if he singles out the wives first because of what they are to illustrate. They illustrate the church. And uh, the church is that which is the heart of the Lord. And so I believe he takes that which is dearest to his own heart first. And he gives instructions to re the really the valentine of scripture. And that is dealing with instruction for wives. Then he turns in verse 25 down through verse 31 and he gives instructions with reference to the husbands. This next progression of thought with reference to instruction to the husbands are given because of this. The husband illustrates Christ. The husband is to illustrate Christ. And in these verses, you have some tremendous standards set forth relative to husbands and wives and their relationship because what the wives illustrate and because what the husbands illustrate in relationship to Christ. And we're talking about relationships where you have a Christian husband, where you have a Christian wife. And it is just wonderful what the husband and wife is to illustrate as far as spiritual truth is concerned. In a word, in verses 22 and 23, the wife illustrating the heart of the Lord in light of the glorious truth of what the church is to be to Christ. And that is in submission, properly arrayed, properly in a proper order. It's a military word showing progression by virtue of uh, relationship. And as the wife illustrates the church and what the church is to be in relationship to Christ in submission to the Lord. The wife is to be in submission to the husbands 
and you'll notice the tremendous emphasis for that. As the wives, well, let me just read verse 22, 23, and 24. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands. Notice the adverbial phrase that follows. As unto the Lord. As unto the Lord. A wonderful, wonderful manner that he puts out for the Christian wife. That her relationship to the husband is that really what her relationship is to Christ. <coughs> As unto the Lord. Makes submission a total spiritual emphasis. And then you find the extent of that submission in verse 24 so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything you remember what the scriptures have to say that in everything Christ is to have first place and here is the very sweet instruction that the Lord gives with reference to first of all I believe the object of his dear heart's love, the church. And so the wife is singled out, first of all, because of the dearness of what the church is to the Lord. That is to be illustrated by the wife. Now then, you have the instruction for the wives in these three verses. Now instruction with reference to husbands. And the spiritual emphasis is still the paramount thing. And I want to read, or rather than read, first of all, let me just point out some things to you by way of progression, if I may. In verses 25, 26, and 27, you have a divine order given. It's not an option, but it's an order. You have an imperative command. And when you come to verse 28, down through verse 31, you have an obligation that is unfolded. You'll see how verse 28 begins, so ought men. That's an obligation. First you have the order, then you have the obligation, and then verse 32 and 33, you have the summarization. And so, let's look at first of all now verses 25, 26, and 27 in light of instruction to the husbands that is given in a manner that is not an option it's not an option it's an order and if we could get that down in our mind it would help us I believe to understand that what is before us in light of the great spiritual needs of the church in light of its walk this wonderful walk I believe it would uh, give an added incentive and an added motivation for a changed life in relationship to husbands and wives as nothing else will ever do so let's spend these few moments this morning in verses 25 26 and 27. Now, you follow along. Because I'm going to give to you, try to at least, these truths in light of what you have from the Greek New Testament. I've just had a thrilling time. I'd like to recommend for you. <coughs> 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 that if you can have as much blessing by going to the hospital for a week as I've had I recommend going to the hospital for a week because this has been one of the most blessed weeks for me in the study of the word of the Lord that I've had and I've been spending a great deal of time right here in this portion and it has been uh, such a blessing and I want to share it with you now husbands Love the wives, as also Christ loved the church, and gave himself for her, or in her behalf. Now notice what follows. 
in order that he might sanctify her by a cleansing with a washing of water by the word in order that he might present the church to himself that he might present uh, to himself a glorious church not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing but in order that she might be holy and blameless holy and blameless now I want you to notice in your Bible that the words that I emphasized in order that are given to you in your English the first part of verse 26 you see the little word that and then in verse part of 20 uh, first part of verse 27 that and the last part of verse 27 but that now here are three what we call three henna clauses these three henna clauses are three purpose clauses showing purpose and each one of these purposes build on the previous purpose so now let's notice what kind of an order has been given to the husbands husbands love the wives now here's something that has really struck home folks this happens to be what we call a present imperative that is an order that is a command that's a command in a tense which denotes continuous action okay it isn't an act no it's not an act it's a life it's a life it's a life that the Lord orders for the husbands and that life that is ordered for the husbands by the Lord is in the strong language of a command to love now I've looked at this word love and you can go through the scriptures and you can find a number of very wonderful ramifications to this word agapao in contrast to some of the other words that are there but sometimes it's a little difficult to find out what we want to know by way of what love is okay and I have often asked myself what is love what is love how am I to love my wife how am I now instead of going outside of the context I believe we have exactly the mind of the Spirit of God in light of its context that gives to us the mind of the Lord for the husband at this juncture of what love is now observe it it's very interesting <clears throat> and again you have now watch this again you have an adverb and an adverb is going to tell you manner extent degree time and we have an adverbial clause that follows that illustrates for us what is meant by this command love and I believe the adverbial clause unfolds to us 
both manner and extent because that's exactly what we have had in the previous three verses in relationship to the wives in submission. Wives in submission in manner. Wives in submission as to extent. Wives be in submission to your husbands as unto the Lord. Wives be in submission to the husbands in everything. Couldn't you get any more than everything? That's extent, isn't it? It certainly is. Now then, husbands, love your wives. Watch it. As Christ. Now here's your pattern. Here's your illustration. As Christ. Here it is. Erist. As Christ loved. As Christ loved the church. Okay. As Christ loved men and women. As Christ loved the church. Right here. The act of love. Now embellished. And gave gave himself for her. Now do you see the manner? And do you see the extent of what the husband is ordered to do? And the thing which had just hit me so hard here is that I have the fact that Christ loved and Christ gave. They are two aorist verbs, which may not mean anything to you, but it means volumes to me, that it looks at that act, that act. What Christ did for the church by that act, he orders you and he orders me for it to be a life. Not an act. Do you understand? What he did once and for all for the church, the husbands are to do for life. <laughs> Boy, I want to tell you, if some of these things could just be taught to some of our whippersnapper kids you would save a great deal of difficulty in homes later on because after the first blush of the honeymoon is over with then you're down to the fact of living isn't that right and that's the way it's going to be the rest of the tide life and it is supposed to be one of the greatest things in the world. Because women, you're part of the church as well as I'm part of the church. Isn't that right? Now oh, he gave himself for us. And you please notice, it does not say he gave some of these things to her. <laughs> okay. Well, if we get married, will you build me a new house? Oh, yes, dear, I'll build you a new house. I fulfilled my obligation of love. Is that right? Baloney. It isn't anything you've got. It isn't anything I've got. But it's me. Now, I'll guarantee you, I, I, I feel probably that uh, some women get cheated. But nevertheless, be that as it may, that husband is to love in the manner that Christ loved in the sense that he gave himself. He gave himself. Himself. Now I'm talking, the Bible is teaching us as to the relationship 
and a Christian husband and a Christian wife. And so help me folks, if you want to believe the Bible true, encourage a mixed marriage and you'll find it war. You'll find it something clear outside the realm of Scripture. And when you've got a young man and you've got a young woman that has no intention of giving any heed to this, now you better remember something. You're not going to have the scriptural pattern. You're just not going to have it. Now some of you have entered into this and then joyously everyone's gotten saved. And then you can really appreciate, can't you, the blessedness of what the scriptures have to say. And wouldn't it have been so wonderful if we could have had it beforehand? <laughs> It had been, but we can praise the Lord we've got it now. But you see, Christ, who bare for her on behalf of her. Now that's totality, isn't that's extent. As the wives are to be in submission in totality, the husbands are to love and totality. And boy, I tell you, when you mix total and total together, you got total. Isn't that right? You've got double total. But if you only have one total and you have nothing, you have no total. Except total chaos and heartache. But, why did he do this? I've got a threefold purpose here that is just marvelous. Why did he love and why did he give and why has he commanded you men and commanded me to have a life of the act? All right, the first purpose is this. In order that he might sanctify her. What does it mean? In order that he might set her apart. Now, I want you to see the order of Scripture. He first gave so that he might set her apart. He might take her out of a world and set her apart to a new walk. Sanctification means to be set apart within view a separated life. A set apart life. We're going to see a little bit later on. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and so forth. They shall be joined again. There shall be one place. Okay. There's separation in marriage. Christ gave himself to separate his church. He separated his church now then you notice how he separates, how he sanctifies. What's the rest of this verse say? By cleansing. By washing. And how does this washing take place? By washing and cleansing, by washing with water, by the what? I'm the boss. You listen to me. Hmm? the word by the word what kind of a separation what kind of a sanctification sacrifice life that has a purpose that's Bible-centered. 
<laughs> because listen it's the word that's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path isn't it right wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by giving heed thereto thy word men we are to illustrate Christ do we as men do we take the initiative to see to it that our wives are so loved by us that she is set apart in that relationship by the perfect light the word of the Lord no wonder we got problems today no wonder we are not experiencing the wonderful walk and you see you have to have a wife that's in tune with the word in order to set her apart by the word isn't that right mixed marriages are bad and I just cringe when I see young people and I've lived long enough to see a lot of wrecks and they'll come oh yeah he knows the Lord yeah she knows the Lord oh we're both saved and do you know where they've gotten the whole basis for their marriage is by that boob tube out there in the world in Hollywood all involve sex all involve the flesh all involved by the temporal thing now that is wrong absolutely wrong and a young couple that enters into a contract like that is a young couple if they do stick together it isn't until they know the dedication of their lives to the Lord before they get squirted away or they're going to have heartache and war and show up in the kids he might sanctify her my how I love this sanctification men for your home for your wives is the word of the Lord and if we're light on the word of the Lord as men I'm guaranteeing you something you're not going to do much of a job for her because in the first place so many of them that you can't do a job with they've had that world do the job on them already and there are their standards there's their thinking there's their uh, they're being conformed to the world they're being fashioned to this world and everything that comes out as far as that world is concerned they're going to demand that and instead of submission it's a demand now fellas we have an awesome responsibility to make a choice whereby the word is first place now that is a commentary of love it is it's the purpose of love now notice how the second purpose clause builds on this that he might present it to himself now this isn't <coughs> the Lord isn't being egotistical here for a moment but he is illustrating for us his work for his church whereby that church is going to bring glory to to him and to heaven eh? 
and he might present it to himself. <laughs> a glorious church. I, I, I wish I could emphasize this. You, you've got, when it comes to this word glory, it's doxo, doxozo, which means I glory, I, I, I give glory. But there's a preposition here, epsilon nu. And that preposition, epsilon nu, is, means to in. In. Now, this isn't grammatically right, but maybe I can illustrate to get a point across. He might... <coughs> <coughs> He might present it to himself. A church of in glory. A glory that's in. <laughs> and it's a gray reflected glory uh, 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 of the inner being. A glorious church, and you get the idea now, having the spot and a wrinkle. <laughs> There isn't anything defiled about it, and there isn't anything dissipated about it. Eh? Isn't it wonderful? That's the, that's the, and then he goes on and says, and any such thing like this. Nothing. I have had the sad responsibility in life in the ministry see a lot of dissipated women. And I've seen dissipated men. But there seems to be something so loathsome about a dissipated woman. She's the flower garden. She's the heart Oh, when she's brought, and she'll be brought. If she isn't rescued, that old world will take her right to the gutter. But the Lord says for the church, Oh, that she might be without one spot or one wrinkle or any such thing as that. And that's the reason he gave himself. Great purpose. And this, for us, is a life. Now, I'm going to just hurry to the third one here. And then, then, then we quit. And that happened, uh, uh, this one, but that it should be. See the little word be there? That's present tense. That's a present tense. That's a present tense of Amy. But that she might exist. Might exist. Holy and without any blemish. Without any blemish. Now I want to tell you, fellas, we got a fantastic standard. Isn't that right? An unparalleled standard. Those are his standards, they're not mine. As I thought about this, all the way through here, the church, the church, the church. The great, great spiritual needs of the church in this wonderful walk is to have wives that illustrate the church, to have husbands that illustrate the Lord. And both husband and wife as they illustrate the church to the, to the Lord that there can never be an accomplishment here unless its spiritual reliability and spiritual relationship of each heart to the Lord. And I'll tell you folks, fellas and gals, when they watch you as husband and wife, do people cock their heads and look, 
man a lot. Look at those two. Are they ever different? Oh, I've heard something about that. I've heard something about a church that belongs to Jesus Christ. And those two, <coughs> when the gaze comes this way, automatically it bounces that way. <laughs> you see the Lord. Those are some precious standards, isn't it, right? Wonderful standards. Well, I hope you'll go back over it. And I hope you'll enjoy it as much as I've enjoyed it. And if it tromps on your toes, good. <laughs> Get a different pair of shoes then. <laughs> Our Father, thank you for your wonderful word. It's just marvelous to come to the revelation of a love letter from heaven's glory and to see what you unveil. And as we've looked at the order, the command, not for some act, but for a life. And we realize that submission is not an act, but a life. All that they might see out there, the reflection of the church. Might see the reflection of the Lord Jesus. And that that union simply might unveil glory. Thank you, dear Father. In Jesus' name we praise you. Amen.